Man, what's going on? Y'all welcome back to another. Today we're going to be out here building a catfish box for the pond. I know y'all about tired of me talking about catfishing, but it's about that time of year. I usually get pretty fired up about it. But I already got a couple of these sides pre-assembled. I just took two pallets and cut them up and then nailed them back together. Like I said, they're about 16 inches wide and 30 inches long. I'm end up making four sides and I got some actual plywood over here too. I would have made it all out of pallets, but I only had two pallets and also just had a couple of spare pieces of plywood laying around. So I got basically nothing in this besides the screws and nails and time. But we're gonna go ahead and get started cutting and marking our lines. Y'all just stay with us. Just one little side piece laid up here. I'm just gonna take and use it as a guideline. Like I said, they are 30 long and then 16 wide. Made it big enough where I felt like two gentle cats could get in there to be able to nest. And the reason why you build these and put them in ponds is because channel cats like to uh, be in burrows to actually be able to reproduce and they claim they won't reproduce in a pond if you don't have something for them to get in. Now I do have a few things already in there but nothing is really as quite as big as this and I want to try this and see if this works better but since I got this already marked out I'm going to go ahead and get this one piece cut and then if we have to we're going to end up cutting the other piece we got over there and then cutting a hole out in it. It's already got a spot already cut out where it was a vent right there. It's just an old piece of scrap wood, like I said, come from the floor. So y'all just stay tuned, we're gonna get to cutting that. By the way, also wear your eye pro. <laughs> Now we got three sides cut. Go ahead and get this other piece marked out and cut. Let me see, and it ain't got to be just perfectly squared. I mean, it's not like you're doing anything for instructions. It's just got to be good enough for government work. But go ahead and get this other piece slid up and we'll cut it. Make sure you don't cut your table. Alright, so I got my other piece that's got the floor vent hole already cut in it. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It's already wide enough. It's roughly around 10 inches wide. But I'm going to go ahead and try to make it, I think it's roughly around 4 inches tall. But I'm going to go ahead and make it around, let's just go with 6 for now and see how that looks. Let's go ahead and get it marked out. Use a trusty ruler here. Like I said, you ain't got to be no master carpenter. You just got to be good enough to be dangerous. Got that marked out. Now before I cut that, I'm also going to go ahead and measure my 16 inch square because this is going to be one of the end pieces. Now I want the 10 inches to be centered, so I'm just going to come on each side of it. Three inches, so I got one, two, and three right there. It's 13. Just come back this way where it's three. Mark it off. Go ahead and get that marked up and we'll get it cut. All right, we gotta go ahead and got a little square mark, just 16 inch square. Like I said, gonna be the front end of the box for the fish to swim into. Let's go ahead and get it cut. Well, this other piece, when we're trying to cut it out, I might end up just using a sawzall. That way, I ain't got to worry about losing any fingers. All right, so I got the cameraman go look for me a sawzall right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and measure off this end piece. Just gonna do another 16 inch square again. Like I said, it ain't gotta be perfect. Cause it's just gonna be fish in there. Go ahead and get this squared on up real quick. Go ahead and start 
start cutting again. Throw your junk to the side, that way you got good kindling. And rush you some weenies on it later. Alright, now that we got that squared off, let's go see if we found something. So we found the sawzall, but apparently I need to go get a blade. But before I do it, I'm just going to go ahead and nail the, most of the box together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plywood as the bottom and the top. And use the two pieces of pallet wood as the sides on it. Just so it sinks a little bit easier with all these cracks right here. And I might also drill some holes in it as well to help it sink. But Go ahead and get some of these nails started real quick, then we'll tack them together. Now, when I nail these on, I'm going to stand this and on up against it. I like it, just pulling it to me. Let's see. Might have to go over to the edge of the table real quick. Try this. All right, so we ended up having to have a little help from our cameraman. To help nail them, just so he could hold the board up while I took and got it started. So I got the bottom end started. Go ahead and nail this top end on on. Now we're starting to look a little bit like a box. <laughs> go ahead and drop a few more nails in top of it, and then we'll go ahead and get that back piece nailed on. Now we'll come back and hit it with some screws. I'm just doing this right now to kind of tack it together. That way it'll just be easier screwing it together afterwards. But also, when you go and screw these, especially this pallet wood, you want to take go ahead and drill you a little pilot hole before you put your screw in, because if not, you'll split the wood. Find that and later on with a lawnmower. Well, I'm going to start some nails on this back side. That way we're going to get it tacked on. Ooh, hit the wrong nail that time. Go ahead and got two nails started. We're going to get it tacked on this back side real quick. I'm going to stand it on up on the ground. That way it's just a little bit easier. And I ain't beating this table to pieces. Hopefully this thing won't fall apart when I go to hitting on it. nail it to in this corner. Like I said, it's just tack it in place until I end up shooting some more screws in it. The cameraman just pointed out I got a bow in the wood. But whenever I shoot it down with screws, it won't go nowhere. But now we got that tack in place, we're going to go get that blade and get that cut. Then we'll go ahead and come back and shoot everything with screws. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, so we got everything nailed together. We ended up finding some bigger nails and using them instead of getting screws. But we went ahead and also cut this part out. We ended up using the skill saw. We used the skill saw instead of going and getting a blade because it was just a little more convenient. But go ahead and get this piece nailed on. 
and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. that nailed on. I'll go ahead and set it back on the table so y'all can look at it. Move them nails out the way. But, like I said, it ain't pretty by no means, but it will work. And I'm sure there's a lot of carpenters out there right now that's screaming up and down <laughs> at me. But, like I said, it ain't gonna be perfect. But the idea of it is, Catfish go in there, two of them will go in there, one laid eggs, and the other one watch over them, and they end up hatching them, raising them up. But, and so we're going to take this thing down to the pond, we'll get in a boat, we'll bring y'all with us, and we'll set it up. Alright, so we're down here at the pond. We're going to go ahead and try to set this up by that trace. Roughly around two to three foot deep right there. That's usually where you want to put your nesting boxes. This has got the very good likelihood of being a real funny video if I get out here in this little ten foot flat bottom and flip it. It cost me quite a bit on the mic, but luckily the cameraman's on the bank with a good camera. He knows how to swim. We'll get out here and try it. Also gonna hope no snake decides to join me in the boat. If it does, y'all might hear a sound. It sounds like a little girl screaming, but I promise you it ain't me. It's just one of the birds out here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try to ease her in the water without flipping. <laughs> well, oh, well. Let me ease back up there, see if I can't set it back up right before it sinks on down. Which it really matters just as long as it sinks in there. And they can find that hole pretty easy. Catching on limbs, what it is. Let me see. Probably good to add some weight to it. It'll probably about ease on up here so I can't find a few pieces of brick. I forgot about that plywood still being solid like that, real dense. But I'm going to add some weight to it. Then we'll go ahead and sink her on down. Alright, we're headed back out here. we got a few bricks. We're going to see if we can't get that thing to sink. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go to the house and grab a shotgun and see if I can't put a few holes in it. <laughs> but one thing I'd like to mention too is this. Every time it seems to find a snake, that bird I was talking about earlier, I'm on a sissy crane. Every time I see a snake, man, I'll go out and haul her out. I don't know why, but like I said, they always around them. So if you ever see me around a snake, just listen. You'll hear one of them sissy cranes nearby. Let's ease on up here. I 
Those bricks seem to be doing a trick. I think it's just gonna take a little while. He's back up here to the bank. All right, you can see them bricks kind of helped it some, but that plywood's still going to soak up some of that water, but it's staying in the same spot roughly, as long as it's somewhere in that general area across that bank, I'll be fine with that. And uh, as always, man, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Oh, oh, oh.